U.S. Secretary of Defense, General Lloyd Austin. When you said that you stand with Israel, you showed up. You stand here with us. Mr. Secretary, you have shown us what it means to be an ally, to be a friend, to be a brother. The Secretary and I have just left the war. We said what decisions are made on Israeli security, on our most sensitive interests. I briefed the Secretary on strategic developments in our region and the Chief of Staff, together with the IDF leadership, shared our, our operations. Defense cooperation and U.S. support in the Pentagon in the White House, in the Congress, ensure freedom of operation and enforce our capabilities. In fact, today we will receive the second aircraft carrying essential munition to the IDF. U.S. deployment of assets on land, in air, and at sea sends a strong message on to both our partners and enemies in the region. On behalf of Israel's defense establishment and of the, on behalf of our citizens, Mr. Secretary, thank you very much. Let me remind you all, our audience, who is the enemy? Our neighbors is Hamas, the ISIS of Gaza, an organization enjoying the Iranian payroll. I cannot let the world forget the brutal attacks Hamas terrorists conduct against Israeli children, Israeli women, Israeli elderly and entire families. Murder rape, kidnapping, this is what we face in this war. This is a war on the existence of Israel as a prosperous state, as a democratic state, as the homeland of the Jewish people. This is a war on freedom and on our common values and we are on the front line. We will keep fighting and we will win this war. We will prevail. With your permission, Mr. Secretary, I'll say a few words in Hebrew. Now, Yom Shabbat, the United States of Israel is in the war. We are in the war on our house, we are in the war on our future. בפגישה שסיימנו עכשיו, ידידי מזכיר ההגנה אוסטין ואני, בבור הפיקוד, סיכמנו על שורה של מהלכים וסוגיות אסטרטגיות. אני בטוח כי גם ידידינו ברחבי העולם וגם אויבינו בכל הגזרות מבינים היטב את משמעות הברית הזו ואת משמעות הביקור הזה. מדינת ישראל היא מדינה חזקה, מדינה שבה מתשת... מתקיים שילוב בין צבא עוצמתי לבין מערכת אזרחית עם חוסן לאומי בלתי רגיל. החוסן שמצוי ב-DNA של כל יהודי הוא תוצר של מאבק הישרדות של אלפי שנים עם תוצאה אחת שלא משתנה. האויבים שלנו רוצים להשמיד אותנו פעם אחר פעם ובסופו של דבר אנחנו שורדים, מנצחים והם נעלמים. זה מה שיקרה גם הפעם עם החמאס. זה הגורל שמחכה לחמאס הדאעש של עזה. המלחמה תהיה ארוכה, המלחמה תהיה קשה ויהיו מחירים, אבל אנחנו ננצח. כבר עכשיו 
הכנו במקביל לפעולות המלחמתיות, גם בשיקום של מקומות שנשרפו והם עוד ישגשגו. ידידי הגנרל אוסטין, חזרנו עכשיו מהערכת מצב בבור הפיקוד. חזית במו עיניך במראות הזוועה, ספגנו קשה, מכה קשה, קשה מאוד. אנחנו נתחקר ונפיק לקחים. נהיה חזקים יותר. אבל עכשיו עת מלחמה, ובעת מלחמה המטרה היחידה והראשית היא לנצח. בימים האחרונים התהפכה המגמה, ומי שתקף אותנו הפך להיות מותקף על ידינו. מקרבות ההירואים בשטחנו, בהם היכו לוחמי צה"ל בסדיר ובמילואים את מי שתכנן להגיע הרבה יותר רחוק מרצועת עזה, עברנו למתקפה על שטחי רצועת עזה. התוצאות יבהירו לעולם מהי נחישותנו, מהי עוצמתנו וכיצד אנחנו מתמודדים עם מי שמנסה להרוג את ילדינו, את זקנינו ואת נשינו, ולצערי במקרה הזה גם הצליח. חברי מזכיר ההגנה אוסטין, יש לנו משימה משותפת, הדרך תהיה ארוכה, אבל בסופו של דבר אני מבטיח לך שאנחנו ננצח. במלחמה הזו אנחנו ננצח. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Yov, we've been in close touch, but it's good to, to see you again in person. And it's good to be back in Israel, even during such terrible days. As a U.S. Secretary of Defense, I am here in person to make something crystal clear. America's support for Israel is ironclad. I extend my deepest condolences to the Israeli people for those killed or wounded in this terrible slaughter by Hamas. I'm also here in solidarity with all the families still living the waking nightmare of not knowing the fate of their loved ones. And we will continue to coordinate closely with Israel to help secure the release of the innocent men, women, and children in the clutches of Hamas, including American citizens. Now Israel is a small country, a place where everybody knows everybody. And in times of trial, the intimacy of your society deepens the intimacy of your grief. But that's not a weakness, it is a profound strength. And in times of testing, Israelis know what to do. Over this awful week, we've seen Israeli hotels and homes take in those who've had to, to flee. We've seen long lineups to donate blood. We've seen WhatsApps explode with messages as people race to support neighbors in anguish. Perhaps because I'm a retired general, I was especially moved by the story of a retired general named Noam Tebow. His son called him on Saturday from his home near Gaza to say that Hamas terrorists had stormed their kibbutz and were closing in. And the retired general jumped into his car in Tel Aviv and raced toward the combat zone, <coughs> linked up with other fighters and rescued his son, his daughter-in-law, and his granddaughters. And when the general arrived at their house, one of his granddaughters just said, Grandpa's here. These are rays of hope in a terrible week. And at times like these, sometimes the best, that a, a, the best thing that a friend can do is just to show up and to get to work. Now, this is no time for neutrality or for false equivalence or for excuses for the inexcusable. There is never any justification for terrorism. 
and thus especially true if it is rampaged by Hamas. And anyone who wants lasting peace and security for this region must condemn and isolate Hamas. Hamas does not speak for the Palestinian people or their legitimate hopes for dignity, security, and statehood and peace alongside Israel. As a former commander of Central Command, the deliberate cruelty of Hamas vividly reminds me of ISIS. Bloodthirsty, fanatical, and hateful. And like ISIS, Hamas has nothing to offer but zealotry, bigotry, and death. The world has just witnessed a great evil. The deadliest attack on civilians in the history of the state of Israel and the bloodiest day in Jewish history since the end of the Holocaust. So make no mistake, the United States will make sure that Israel has what it needs to defend itself. And Israel has a right to protect its people. You know, when there are many phone calls this week, President Biden has told Prime Minister Netanyahu that the United States would also respond swiftly and decisively to such a ma massive terrorist assault. And the President also underscored that democracies like ours are stronger and more secure when we uphold the laws of war. Terrorists like Hamas deliberately target civilians. But democracies don't. This is a time for resolve and not revenge, for purpose and not panic, and for security and not surrender. At President Biden's direction, we have moved urgently to respond to this crisis and to send, to send a strong message of deterrence. The USS Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group is now in the region, led by the largest aircraft carrier in the world. We've augmented U.S. fighter aircraft squadrons in the Middle East, and the U.S. Department of Defense stands fully ready to deploy additional assets if necessary. As President Biden has said, for any country for any group or anyone thinking about trying to take advantage of this atrocity, to try to widen the conflict or to spill more blood, we have just one word, don't. The world is watching and so are we. And we aren't going anywhere. We will remain in close contact with our valued partners across the region and security assistance from the Department of Defense is already rapidly flowing into Israel. That includes munitions, air defense capabilities, and other equipment and resources. It also includes more interceptors for Iron Dome to save Israeli's life, Israeli lives. And we will continue to ensure that Israel has what it needs to keep itself secure. Now, Hamas attacked at a time of global challenge. But the United States is the most powerful country in the world. And we remain fully able to project power and uphold our commitments and direct resources to multiple theaters. So we will stand with Israel even as we stand with Ukraine. United States can walk and chew gum at the same time. And U.S. Secu security assistance to Israel will flow in at the speed of war. As this harrowing week draws to a close, and as Shabbat draws near, we stand together. And we stand strong. The United States has Israel's back and that is not negotiable, and it never will be. 
And after this terrible week, I wish you and all the people of Israel Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary. Um, your presence in the Eastern Mediterranean clearly projects power, but should Israel be attacked from the north, from Hezbollah in Lebanon, will you be willing to exercise your force and join the fighting? Now, I ordered additional assets to the region to bolster deterrence, and again, the message that we would send to any country or group thinking to take advantage of this situation and widen, and widen the conflict, don't. I won't speculate on, on anything that could happen in the future. I will just tell you clearly that the United States will continue to support Israel's right to defend itself. Thank you. Please, a question to the Defense Minister. Mr. Gallant, you talked at the beginning of the week about how the goal of the war is to destroy Hamas. The citizens of Israel are asking themselves what is the meaning of this. Can you tell us what you are trying to achieve in the military and how it is going to end? In what situation of Hamas is going to end? We are going to destroy the government of Hamas. We are going to destroy the military of Hamas. We are going to נוודא שהאיום הזה לא קיים בגבולות שלנו, זה יהיה ממושך, זה יהיה קטלני, זה יהיה עוצמתי וזה יהיה לתמיד. The U.S. administration has told Israel to avoid causing civilian casualties and to uphold what you call just now the laws of war. Given how Hamas fights, deliberately launching operations from dense civilian areas, how could Israel permanently end the terrorist threat posed by Hamas without inevitably risking many civilian lives? And as we watch the civilian death toll in Gaza rise while Israel conducts its counterattacks and perhaps a ground invasion, do you believe the moral culpability for those Palestinian deaths belongs to Israel, Hamas, or both? I'll leave it to Israel to, uh, to talk about its potential plans and uh, its approach to uh, conducting operations. Uh, Matt, I'll just uh, uh, say again that Israel has a right to defend itself. And we will support Israel's right to defend itself. We will continue to flow in security assistance. And I've worked with Israeli forces over the years, over many years. As you know, I wore a uniform for 41 years. My experience in working with the Israeli forces is they're professional, they're disciplined, and they're focused on the right things. And so, I expect that uh, going forward, uh, they will continue to exhibit that same degree of professionalism that we've seen in the past. But you know, Matt, we've seen this before. Uh, the international community fought ISIS, uh, who was, in some cases was, uh, was embedded uh, deeply in built-up areas. And that international coalition uh, fought valiantly and, and protected civilians and created corridors for uh, humanitarian uh, uh, movement even in the midst of a, of a pretty significant fight. So again, this is a professional force. It is well led, and I, I have every expectation that it will be disciplined. Thank you. And for Minister Gallant, have you seen evidence that Iran was directly involved in planning or executing the recent attack on your country, or any signs that either Iran or its proxies are seeking to exploit the situation? And if you do come to see signs of an imminent attack on Israel, are you in favor of preemptive strikes? Iran, Hezbollah, and Hamas is uh, one axis, an axis of evil. Everything is directed generally from Iran. The permission is given by Iran. The money is supplied by Iran. And uh, the ideas are shaped in Iran. Therefore, it doesn't matter if they give or didn't give the permission, but the idea 
is an Iranian idea as to the actions, future actions of IDF. I will uh, stay confidential for good reasons. Thank you. Mr. So Secretary, thank you for this. Um, House um, Foreign Affairs Chair Mike McCall said that we know that Egypt had warned Israel three days prior to that event, like something like this could happen. We don't know how we missed it. We don't know how Israel missed it. So can you tell us what really the U.S. knew before this attack? What I can tell you is that if we had known or if we know of a pending attack against uh, an ally, we would clearly inform that ally. Uh, but what we're focused on now, Suleiman, is we're focused on making sure that Israel has what it needs to defend its sovereign territory and protect its citizens. And the minister and I spent uh, a good bit of time talking today about what those requirements are and what we need to do to urgently meet those needs. אדוני השר, תודה רבה על זה. פעם ראשונה שדרג מדיני עולה לשאלות העיתונאים. אתמול שמענו את הרמטכ"ל גם לוקח אחריות ואומר, אנחנו ישבנו בשמירה על ביטחון אזרחי ישראל. האם יש כן גם אזרחי ישראל שואלים את עצמם, האם כן יש איזושהי לקיחת אחריות מצד הדרג המדיני בעניין השקרה לא? אנחנו ספגנו התקפה קשה עם מחירים מאוד כבדים. יהיה זמן לתחקר. את העניין הזה. בעת הזו, גם אני, גם המטה הכללי, הרמטכ"ל וכל לוחמי צה"ל, אנשי השב"כ, אנשי המוסד, משטרת ישראל, כולנו ממוקדים בהתאם להנחיות שנתתי בדבר אחד, לנצח ולהביס את חמאס כפי שפירטתי. זה מה שנקבע, זה הדירקטיבה של ממשלת ישראל וזה מה שיהיה. Last question from Tom Secretary. Thanks for doing it. Mr. Secretary, as you just stated, you were involved in the major effort to stop and eradicate ISIS. When you talk to the minister and others, and that experience courses through you, what kind of lessons learned do you feel or might be helpful in this case, especially dealing with that whole urban situation that you just referred to, the proposed the evacuation of civilians from Gaza, those kind of challenges. What kind of ideas and thoughts do you have that you can share, please? Well, thanks, Tom. I would tell you that um, encountering ISIS, I felt as if we were staring evil in the eye. It was truly evil. And what we've seen from Hamas, uh, it takes that evil to another level. And so uh, that's the first thing that we need to, we need to remember and, and consider. There are a number of things that, uh, that we talked about today that, that there are some lessons learned that we, we'd be more than happy to share with our, our allies here uh, in, in terms of operating effectively in, uh, in dense urban terrain creating uh, safe humanitarian corridors, uh, making sure that we're thoughtful about uh, how we shape the battle, uh, and making sure that uh, you know, our objectives are well-defined. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, we'll, we'll continue to share uh, the lessons that we've learned over the years. And of course, as the Israelis prosecute this fight, uh, we will learn lessons from them. And so uh, I think it's this great uh, teamwork that has served us both well over the years, and we'll continue that. Mr. Minister, uh, there's been some confusion over the 24-hour deadline that Israel announced to for civilians in Gaza to move south, to evacuate and move south. Uh, there was a 24-hour deadline initially reported, and then there's been reports that Israel has modified that, have left it open. In other words, not sticking to 24 hours of a deadline. Would you please clarify specifically, is there going to be a deadline? What can you tell us about the deadline? And what will Israel do, if anything, to help civilians move? Some of the people have said, that's Hamas's problem. It's not our problem. 
Well, first of all, I would like to remind all of us what happened less than a week ago. 1,200 Israelis were brutally murdered, raped, uh, burned alive. Kids were tied one to the other and shot at the hand. This is Hamas. This is the ISIS of Gaza. And as the secretary said, they took evil to another level. That's first issue. Second, Israel never and ever will not shoot civilians in purpose. Therefore, we are asking all the civilians in Gaza City to go south of Gaza. And the reason is that because we don't want to harm them. The camouflage of the terrorists is the civil population. Therefore, we need to separate them. So those who want to save their life, please go south. We are going to destroy Hamas infrastructures, Hamas headquarters, Hamas military establishment, and take this phenomena out of Gaza and out of the earth. They cannot live among human civilized people. But 24 hours, is that deadline still holding, the 24 hours? Thank you very much, President.